old couple donates a second-hand piano they bought three decades back to charity, making way for a 500,000-pound discovery. But before we start, please give the video a like and make sure to subscribe to Wonderbot and hit the bell so you'll never miss any uploads from us. Graham and Meg Hemmings have been together since the 1980s. As a couple, they've always looked perfect, but this story is partially related to them and partially to one single decision made by this couple that changed everything in a moment. Their intentions were good, but the results of their actions were disappointing. They had a secret placed in their house for over three decades and they were completely unaware of it. And when the truth was finally out, the couple's regret was obvious. One should always take a closer look before buying anything. Thinking why? You'll get the answer soon enough. Graham and Meg were always connected by their similar interests. Be it food or music, all their interests went hand in hand. They had it planned for themselves and they were blessed enough that everything they planned went accordingly. Yes, everyone gets their part of problems, but the Hemmings never got the too complicated situation. Rather, life seemed simple for the two of them. Music was one reason that Graham and Meg came so close. Their interest in learning how to play a musical instrument was one thing that kept them in touch while they used to study in different schools and later colleges. They joined the same guitar classes. Once Graham started working, they both left the classes but got married. This stopped the musical phase for a while, but they could not have resisted for too long. Graham and Meg Hemmings were married for a couple of years and they were going to make one big step of moving to a new city. At the beginning of the 1980s, Graham and Meg, along with their son Sam, moved to Saffron Walden, Essex, east of England. Graham got a job in there and looking at the increments, the Hemmings thought it would be a great opportunity for the family's future. After moving to Saffron Walden, the Grahams grew from three to six within the next few years. Sam now had three younger siblings, Will, Ben, and Jessica. Graham was earning good and the family was happy. That's when Meg came up with an idea. Her kids were doing well in studies and she wanted them to learn other things too during their childhood. And that's when it started. This is every parent's responsibility to let their kids do what they're interested in, also to indulge them in extracurriculars. So Meg was thinking, what will be best for her kids? Yes, the thought of enrolling the kids in some music classes was always in the back of her mind, but she wanted to know what her kids were interested in. Who knew with this they'll bring a jackpot home? The Hemmings asked their eldest son, Sam, to decide what he'd love to learn after homework is completed. Sam gave it thought. He was already in his school's baseball and basketball teams and was willing to do something different if given a chance. Eventually, he made his decision and when he shared it with his parents, who felt like they were in luck. Usually it's said like father like son, but saying like parents like children won't be wrong in this case. As Sam told his parents that he wanted to learn the piano, his parents couldn't be happier with his decision. They themselves learned piano but never had one at home to practice. This would give them an opportunity to bring music back into their lives. Little did the Hemmings know they'll be getting much more than music. The couple made Sam join nearby piano lessons. Seeing their elder brother playing, Will, Ben, and Jessica also became eager to learn. Sending all the four kids to learn the same thing looked like a costly idea. Anyway, the Hemmings knew a cost-effective way out of this situation. Wondering what it was? The couple started saving and before the time of Christmas, they had enough to buy a second-hand piano. But getting a specific piano wasn't easy in those days. One has to spread the word among their friends and community. So the Hemmings asked a couple of their friends to look for a piano for them at the lowest price possible. They saw quite many pianos before Christmas. Sadly, none of them looked fitting into their home setup. They wanted a not-so-extraordinary but simple-looking piano that would go with their house. It was on the Christmas Eve that one of their friends made an offer that was worth taking. It was a Broadwood piano and the couple immediately agreed on buying it. At this point, the Hemmings' sole intention were to train their kids. All this sounds just joyful, right? Now the couple wishes that they would have given it more thought. The Hemmings' friend suggested buying his piano as he doesn't play it. The couple had already seen the piano he was talking about and they knew it was exactly what they were looking for. During one get-together in their friend's house, Meg even played her favorite tune on that piano. So this was it. The kids were happy and so were the parents. Now just one teacher would do the job of teaching their kids how to play the piano. For some time, this piano became the center of attraction of their house. 
at least one of the four kids was practicing and trying to be an expert pianist however this charm will soon fade away not long after we moved to Saffron Walden in 1983 we asked a friend of ours if he could keep an eye out for a secondhand piano which we purchased for the use of our four children Sam will Ben and Jessica the rather attractive Broadwood piano arrived complete with two candlestick holders and the three boys in particular playing it for the next 20 years recalled Graham and Meg who now had nothing in their hands thinking of what might have happened Graham and Meg's four children became experts in a span of six months they used to practice play and have fun while this piano was spreading happiness all around it was also hiding the greatest secret the Hemmings will encounter in their lives the kids grew up completed their college and moved to different cities Graham and Meg live alone now and now they never use the piano the piano that the kids used to fight for was now never played it was just a showpiece taking a lot of space in Graham and Meg's home despite all the memories that were connected to this piano the couple who learned the art of letting things go very well decided it was this piano's turn to be removed the couple wanted to put this piano at the right place and in the right use in 2016 Graham was 72 and Meg was 65 years old when they decided to donate the piano they knew it was working fine and in playable condition they were donating it to a local college for the students isn't that a generous act but along with the piano the Hemmings also gave up on a fortune after Graham and Meg donated the piano it wasn't directly put to use the principal of the college called for a piano tuner to take a closer look at it this one step was about to bring one of the biggest discoveries of the year piano tuner technician Martin Backhouse was 61 years old and had been fixing pianos for most of his life as he recalled it was one of those incredible moments I'd only taken off the first octave when I realized something was going on what could possibly be hiding in just another piano well it wasn't just a random piano not anymore Martin the tuner further added as soon as I started lifting out the keys I thought uh-huh what's this underneath the keyboard I lifted one and thought that can't be moth repellent it's too heavy what was it that was hidden inside a treasure or even more I thought am I going to have to open up one of those packages to see what it is there was no way I was expecting any gold I opened up one of the packets and did a double take I thought it couldn't be sovereigns but this was something big Martin further told about his reaction oh it looks like there's rather a lot of gold in this what he did next is just too incredibly overwhelming that it'll win anyone's heart well Martin could have kept the treasure to himself as he found it he immediately called the headmaster and informed him what he had found the wise man with a kind heart said no I could have quite happily swapped them a brand new piano for that one but that would not have been right or proper as it was gold I thought that the school needs it just as much as I do knowing the problems with the pianos in the school a person further said a short while later he informed me and the head teacher that he discovered several small packages concealed under the piano's keys we opened one of them and found that it contained a number of coins which we agreed were gold sovereigns clearly this was something that none of could possibly have imagined and it's hard to describe how we felt on making this discovery after the initial shock surprise and excitement we had to quickly decide what to do next what's next we photographed the packages in situ numbered and photographed each package and placed them in a school safe after carrying out some internet based research into gold sovereign and the treasures act of 1986 we agreed that the coins were a significant find and should be reported to the coroner shortly after contacting the coroner's office we were contacted by Peter Ravel Shropshire's finds liaison officer who was working on the coroner's behalf as the person described the whole scenario were these coins real gold in this conversation and subsequent meeting we discussed the find the treasures act and how the piano was acquired Peter confirmed that the coins were genuine and took them away for safekeeping and began the investigations that led us to where we are today said the headmaster the actual worth of this gold is unbelievable the British Museum's Peter Ravel said there's a substantial amount of money there enough to buy a house so equivalent today to about 350,000 pounds that's not to say it's worth that today but that's its spending power so whose money is this if the estimates are right then this is the biggest gold hoard ever to be discovered in Britain and Graham and Meg had it for like 30 years and still they missed it 
If you think that's the strangest thing in this story, then you got to continue watching. A spokesperson for the British Museum stated, the individual coins are not particularly rare, being the button coinage of the British Empire. However, it is the largest hoard of its type and the find of its significant importance from a historical perspective. We assume the owner thought it was a good place to hide something and indeed it was taken 75 years to rediscover. Peter Ravel further told, it's right in the middle of the First World War. Things are not going as well as you want. Is money safer in the bank or at home under lock and key? And finally, Ian Richardson, treasurer registrar, British Museum, suggested, This is not a long-buried assembly of war booty or grave goods, but the large sum of money hidden in plain sight less than 100 years ago. I've been amazed at the stories that people have shared about their families. We're a nation which loves history and adores mysteries, and this is one that rivals the very best detective fiction out there. But nothing has been put forward to make me believe that we found the person who's an heir to the person who stashed these coins away," said Peter Ravel from the British Museum. When the Hemmings got to know about it, they were taken in by disbelief. Although the iron frame piano was tuned from time to time, we had no idea that it contained the hidden coins, recalled the Hemmings. I don't regret not finding the coins. I think that's moved on. We got to celebrate that it's going to be used for a good cause, and that's how we view it, positively said Mr. Hemmings. The only ones who are going to benefit from finding this gold treasure are Mr. Blackhouse and the college. They're going to split the money and, sadly, Graham and Meg will not get anything in return for their good deed. Surprisingly, more than 60 people have approached the investigators, stating that they're the real owners of the gold. John Ellery, the coroner who was investigating the real owners of the treasure, said, It's been an amazing case to deal with, but we've drawn a blank in terms of finding the original owner. We've meticulously gone through all the claims, but there is a bar for the evidence and at the moment nobody has reached close to that bar. We're not sure of the value, but I would expect it to be hundreds of thousands of pounds. The sadness is that it's not a complete story, but I'm delighted that the college will benefit from the find. It's an incomplete story, but still an exciting one, said Mrs. Hemmings. She added, we hope they'll do something that benefits the children's musical ability. We feel strongly about that. But she does have one regret. The sadness is it's not a complete story. They've looked and searched for the people and they unfortunately haven't come forward. It's an incomplete story, but it's still an exciting story," said Mrs. Hemmings, who was curious to know the truth. At the end, we want to know your opinion about the story in the comments box below.